What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode. In today's video, we're gonna be taking apart the cylinder head and completely disassembling it. So we still have all the valves, the camshafts, the springs, the retainers. We still have all of that still attached to the cylinder head. So because we need to refinish this and send this out to a machine shop, I'm gonna be trying to save myself a little bit of money by doing as much work as I can now. The more work that I can do now, the less work the machinist is going to be doing there. So that in turn means that I'm gonna be spending less when I bring this and send it out. So we're gonna begin by removing the things that are found on the outside part of the cylinder head and then we're gonna work our way in. So first things first, we're going to begin by removing the oil pressure switch that's found on the side of the cylinder head. So this is what actually measures how much oil pressure you have found in the cylinder head and it ensures that everything is going to be properly lubricated. If it's not and you don't have enough oil pressure, this is the sensor that's gonna throw a code on your dash letting you know you have a problem. Next up, we're going to begin by removing the camshafts from the cylinder head. So on each one of the camshafts, there's going to be these bearing caps that hold the cam in place. Now I'm just going to crack each one of these things loose so I know that I can remove all the bolts should I want to take it out. Before you guys go ahead and just start taking this stuff out, keep in mind that there's going to be some sort of marking found on each one of these retainers here for the camshafts. So if you look at the exhaust side first, we can see that it starts off with marking number zero, one, two three, four, and then when we switch to the other side, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now keep in mind, that's the way it comes out, so that's the way it's gonna have to be put back in. So after you have all the bolts loosed, you should be able to then remove each one of them. Now I'm gonna be removing the furthest from the center first, so that the camshaft isn't gonna to wanna to spin or just spring up on me. Now I'm gonna do the exact same thing to the other camshaft. So once you have each one of these bolts removed, the retainers can come up along with the cam. Now make sure to set each one of these aside and be sure to note of which one is which. So with both camshafts removed, along with each one of the camshaft caps, you have to make sure that you keep each and every one of these together. So you can't mix up the orientation between them like this. Because keep in mind, the metal that's on here is mated to the metal that's on here. So it's very crucial to keep them together. Same thing goes for the bolts. Now it's not the end of the world for the bolts, but if you can keep it all together, you're not gonna be having any problems when you have to put all this back together. Now this also works for each one of the camshaft lobes and the rockers that are found in here. So once you take these things out, you wanna be sure to put them in the exact same spots and organize them so that you're not gonna be mixing up the order of each one of these rockers and the camshaft lobes. With the camshafts now removed, it's easy to get access to the rockers along with the hydraulic push rod that's found underneath the rocker. Now be sure to keep each one of these components together and be sure to keep track of where you remove these from. So if you remove any valve, any springs or whatever, you wanna make sure you keep all of it together. Now I purchased an organizing tray to help me do exactly that. So with each one of these rocker arms and hydraulic lifters removed, we can organize them and set them aside in our tray. So next up, we're gonna be removing each one of the valves, the springs, the retainers, and the keepers, all from the cylinder head. So there's going to be a total of 16 of them because there's eight of them found for each camshaft. So in order to do that, I'm gonna be using this kit right here. This is a Lyle valve keeper remover and installer kit. So if you open this up, it'll come with instructions. And depending on what size cylinder head or whatever you're working with, it's gonna come with a small uh, remover and installer and a large one. Now considering I'm working with a small engine, I'm not gonna be needing the big one. I'm gonna be using this guy right here. Now if I wanted to install these pieces and I had everything disassembled, I would use it like this. But considering that we're taking everything apart, we don't need the end of it right here. So we can put that back in there. And then we just need this part. So this part is magnetized. There's a little magnet found in the middle of it. And when we use this and put it over top of a valve, the way that it's gonna remove it is you're just gonna either push it down if the spring is soft enough or use a hammer and tap it. And what that's going to do is it's gonna push down the retainer, it's gonna push it down and relieve the pressure that's on the keepers. As soon as you do that, the keeper is going to be released and it's gonna be put inside the inside of here. You take it out, keep track of where it came from, and then everything is gonna be good to go. So off camera, I removed one of these springs, the keepers, and the retainers from one of the valves. Now the reason why I did that is so I can show you what exactly is comprising the entire setup. So you can see that we have these little components right here, along with the one valve that's found on both the intake and exhaust side. So everything you see here is going to be one complete assembly. So be sure to keep track of where all of this goes. Now once we take out this one, we're gonna set it up in our tray, and we're gonna keep doing this exact same procedure for all the springs, 
the keepers and the retainers for the intake and exhaust side. Now, one part that's going to be slightly tricky is the valves that are found towards the ends of the camshafts. So you can see there's not a lot of room there. So what I'm going to do to get these out is I'm gonna be using a 13 millimeter socket and I'm just gonna place that over top of the retainer. Now, once you have it at that point, you can grab your hammer and give it a tap. So this setup is gonna be a lot smaller and a lot thinner than the tool that we have from Lyle. When you do that, keep an eye on the retainer and the actual little keepers that are found on top of the valve because we don't have anything that's going to be capping it off with this socket. With each one of the springs, the keepers and the retainers removed from this side here, from the intake side, what we're going to do is we're gonna lift this up so that we can pull out each one of the valves. So we're gonna turn this on the side. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna allow us um, to get the space to remove each of these valves. So right now there's nothing that's really holding each one of these in place. So with a direct injection engine, the reason why I went ahead and did the carbon cleanup is because of the carbon that's built up inside these valves. So you can see it's kind of, you know, sticking on the way out. So you can see all this junk that's in there. Look at all this crap. That is the reason why my engine went to crap. So this here is the valve that was removed from the intake side. So you can see that there is carbon that's found on the back side of the valve and that is actually what's still there uh, from when I did the sandblasting tutorial. So I showed you guys how to walnut blast the intake valves to make them somewhat clean. Now on the side of the, each one of these valves, there's still a little bit of carbon that's built up. So see that little chunk? That right there is what's stopping my cylinders from making proper combustion because that little part that has a little groove and then you go to another spot that doesn't have that, uh, that's gonna be an uneven seal, and it's not gonna make a nice clean seal on the valve seat. So, with these out now, you can see how actually tough and dried out all this carbon is. It's pretty much oil that's evaporated because of all the heat and all that other crap. So we're gonna keep these in order. So that was this valve here. So with each one of the intake valves removed, we can see how much gunk and accumulation we have found inside of here. So even after doing the walnut blasting procedure, you can still see that there is some residue and carbon buildup found on the intake. So you can see that it's usually found where the valve was blocking, but it's still, like there's still a noticeable amount of stuff in there. Now the carbon buildup cleaning procedure did a huge difference um, at cleaning the intake side, and I'll show you guys a before and after, and if you wanna see that video, you guys can do that. But there still is a decent amount of carbon that's on these valves. So you can see that the carbon cleaning procedure, it can only do so much. So if your valves are completely disgusting and completely saturated with carbon and old oil, this is what you're going to have. So you can see in here, the carbon that's still left around the ring. So my guess is that the carbon that's found around the outside perimeter of the valve is what was actually in contact um, with the valve seat. So the carbon cleaning procedure wasn't able to fully clean all the stuff out, and that's kind of evident because you can still see there's stuff on all of these valves. So it doesn't really matter now. We've got the engine in this state. It just means that we have a lot more work to do to get this all fixed and back together. Now before I go ahead and flip this over and do the exact same procedure for the exhaust valves, what I'm going to do is first show you the gunk that's found inside of here. So you can see that there is a little bit of carbon that's still found inside each one of these valves, or inside each one of these ports. Now you can see that there's another little hole found on the inside of the bigger hole, and that is actually the valve guide. So you can see there's a little bit of carbon that's built up inside of there. Now this is after I went ahead and cleaned up each and every one of these with a little pick. Okay, you wanna be disgusted? So you see all that carbon that's on there? You guys saw how disgusting it was? Look at how much carbon I already removed from like just that little part in there. So you've gotta think how much carbon was in there before doing the carbon cleaning procedure. So it's a good thing that I'm taking all this apart. Now I don't think I'm going to be expecting any of that carbon found on the exhaust side, um, but you never know. Now I'm gonna flip this over and repeat the exact same thing for the exhaust side. What I'm going to do first is arrange each and every one of these, keep them in order, and then align them so they're matched up with each one of the rockers, valves, the springs, retainers, all that. I'm gonna make sure they all stay together. So if that is the front of the engine, you can see the little mark on it right there saying front. That's the front, that's the front. So I'm gonna be keeping all of this organized. So if I need to put any of this back together, if I need to reuse any parts, the mated valves will fit up on the mated rockers, the hydraulics, all that stuff. 
Now for this next step, I'm gonna be upgrading and taking care of the orifices that are found inside of the cylinder head. So the cylinder head has a lot of oil that goes and circulates inside of here. Now the way that it handles that afterwards, once it's been lubricated on a part, it flings off and then falls to either the bottom or the walls of the cylinder head. Now it goes down it and there are holes that the oil has to go into. Now the casting marks from this cylinder head, because it's you know completely stock, the casting marks aren't that nice. So I'm gonna actually get the camera in and show you guys how bad these uh, the castings are, but I'm going to be removing them by using a Dremel along with a drill and some carbide bits. So these carbide bits are gonna help me mill down the aluminum and they're gonna help me remove all of those imperfections in the casting. Now, I'm not looking to make it absolutely perfect, but even if I can make it so that the circular orifices are like a proper circle instead of jagged and small, um, that's gonna be a good thing and it's gonna be making it so that the oil can get to the oil pan sooner and not any extra oil is gonna be circulating up in the cylinder head. So looking at the head, the entire thing is made out of cast aluminum and you can see that some of these castings aren't exactly nice and clean. So you can even see some of the castings found right there. See those two holes? Those are not really that precise. So if I can get um, the openings on those things to be nice and smooth and a nice proper circle, that's going to be good. Since I have the cylinder head completely apart, I can do this. Now I would not plan on doing this if I didn't have everything removed. So I have the valves, the rockers, everything, the camshafts, all that removed. Um, all these valve guides that you still see inside of here, they are going to be removed and they're going to be replaced with new ones. So it's not a real big deal for me having those in there because they're going to be scrapped anyways. But you can see some of these casting marks are not exactly clean. So I want to go through the, uh, I want to go through and put a little bit of work to clean out and smoothen all this stuff up. Now I'm not looking for absolute perfection. I'm just looking to have it so that it, you know, it looks like a half decent cylinder head. I'm not looking to remove all the imperfections that are say found down there. That I'm not really going to be able to see any gains from that. But it's actually kind of sad to see how this was A-OK -okay from the manufacturer. But regardless, that's going to be going down. Now on a side note, I'm also going to be porting and polishing and smoothing out the surface found inside each one of these ports. So both for the intake and the exhaust. All those rough marks are from the casting. Now all of that is going to be removed and that's going to be for a different video. But for this one, I'm gonna be showing you how to get rid of all those imperfections found on top of the cylinder head. Before you start grinding away at the cylinder head, be sure to have some sort of respirator to prevent any aluminum dust from being entered into your lungs. You can then install your milling bit attached to your drill or your Dremel and then start going to town on the imperfections and the irregularities in the cylinder head. So right now, all these imperfections that I'm removing are for pure aesthetic differences. There isn't really a performance gain from removing the little pieces of aluminum found on the side of the bore for the spark plugs. However, since we have this all apart, it makes sense to clean this up. Now, I'm not going to be making any of these parts weaker, but I am going to be making it look cleaner and it looks like a more presentable cylinder head. I'm actually kind of surprised that BMW would allow this kind of cylinder head quality to be left from the manufacturer like that. But whatever, I'm not the one that made it. I am going to be the one though who's going to be cleaning this up. The milling bit kit that I purchased comes with eight different attachments. So you can use any kind of bit that you want to get into any kind of crack and crevice that you have. So you can go as crazy as you want with cleaning up your cylinder head, or if you just want to remove some of the castings you can do that now it's entirely up to you and it also depends on how much time you want to spend on doing this there isn't necessarily a performance gain from this however it does look a hell of a lot better once you're done I'm going to be using the exact same bits to port and polish each one of the ports for my intake and exhaust. So any irregular castings that I can see, I'm going to remove. So these right here are the crucial parts of that. Now you can go one step further and polish it and sand it down with more fine stuff, but that's entirely up to you and for another video. But you guys can stop whenever you guys are satisfied with your results. So after spending a couple minutes cleaning up the imperfections that are found on the castings, you can see why it'd be a great idea to not do this while all the other parts are installed because you're going to get so many little aluminum chunks that are going to be getting thrown all over the cylinder head. Everything that you've seen so far though is just for an aesthetic difference. If you want to see an actual performance difference, what we're going to have to do is machine down and cut away the little oil galleries that are found in between both of these little ports. So for these large orifices here and the smaller ones, we're going to be using two different bits. So for the smaller orifice, we're gonna be using this bit here and you can see that it goes directly inside the little hole. 
goes in there nice and easily and we're just gonna machine down the little surface that's found on the outside perimeter of it. Now for the big one, we can also use this bit, but I'm gonna be using this little triangular one right here and it's gonna allow me to get in there and clean up all this very nicely. Now again, this is all preference, but just for your sake, I'm gonna show you what I'm using. So there are these two that I'm using here and there's also a large assortment of other ones that you can use. So it's entirely up to you. If you get this kit, it comes with all of them. It's relatively inexpensive. You can throw this on your drill, you can throw this on a Dremel, and it works very nicely. Now these are carbide bits, so these work very well at cutting down aluminum, and they also work for cutting down steel. But because these are so hard, you can cut down the aluminum like it's butter. So just be careful and take your time while doing this. You don't wanna really push into whatever you're trying to cut, you wanna let the tool do its thing. So just basically let it sit up against it and let the teeth on the actual milling bit do all the work. So what you're seeing here is the orifice for the rocker. That right there is the part that we're gonna be cutting and milling through. So we're not gonna be taking too much off, we just wanna smoothen that out. Just be careful not to machine anything here, only on these two little galleries found here. So that's pretty much all you wanna do. You're not really looking to shape anything, you just wanna cut out the little imperfections that are on the outside of it. So you can see that that now looks really good. Now if you want, you can cut down a little bit more to remove a little bit more of the imperfections, but even still, that looks a lot nicer than it did. Moving over to the next port, you can see that we have the same kind of thing. So these holes we're gonna leave untouched and we're only gonna machine the center part. And you can see that gallery looks really nice. We're just gonna replicate and do the exact same thing that we did here and to the other smaller orifice to the rest of the cylinder head. After everything is all said and done, there are a lot of metal shavings that are found on the floor of the cylinder head. Most of the hard cast lines are now removed and there are no sharp edges that were overlooked. Considering I don't plan on removing the cylinder head anytime in the near future, and this shaving process only takes about half an hour, I would say this is well worth it and it's a great idea to do this now. We now need to remove the aluminum shavings in the head. To prevent the head from getting scratched up and damaged, I'm going to be setting the head down on a soft foam mat. Then comes spraying down the cylinder head with some water and some Meguiar Super Degreaser. I'll be killing two birds with one stone here, since the shavings will be washed away and I'll be able to clean and remove the old engine oil from the head. If you repeat this process more than once, the cylinder head is just going to keep on getting cleaner and cleaner. I understand that if you hot tank the cylinder head and any other engine component for that matter, it will clean down the part and make it look really good. However, I'm showing you a cheap and inexpensive DIY version of the same kind of thing. You're going to get a very similar finish by removing most of the hard caked on oil from the cylinder head. The embedded stains on there are going to be pretty close to impossible to remove. Now a quick tip that I have for you guys is you should pick up a bunch of different sets of brushes. Now I have some inexpensive Tekton wire brushes and then some other nice solvent resistant brushes. You can use these things for cleaning the inside of the head along with the bottom side of it. Since I'm going to be painting the exterior of the head, I want to strip it down of any dirt and grease, and with these brushes paired with the degreaser, you can do exactly that. The last components that are attached to the cylinder head are the valve guides. Now, once you take out the valves, you really should be replacing the valve guides with new ones. Considering new valve guides are quite inexpensive, it wouldn't be a half bad idea to replace them. So keep in mind there's going to be a total of eight of them for the intake valves, and then for the exhaust side, we're gonna have the same kind of thing. You can take all of them out by using a set of needle nose pliers, set them aside, and then those will be the last parts on the cylinder head. At this point now, it's going to be completely stripped and bare. Okay, so I have the cylinder head down there and I'm cleaning it up. Now, you don't need to go ahead and disassemble everything if you just wanna inspect it or whatever. Now, what I'm gonna be doing is furthering the cleaning process and I'm gonna be removing any extra carbon that's built up on the intake runners along with the exhaust runners. Now, for the intake side, you're not gonna have anything that's really built up on there. You're like, how do I say this? There's not going to be anything that's really hard because all that you're gonna have on there is going to be dehydrated and dried out oil. So what you can use to remove it 
and clean it up is a toothbrush. Now this isn't going to do a 100% job at cleaning everything out, but it is going to do a pretty good job. So I have this cheap electric toothbrush that I picked up online and I'm gonna be trimming the bristles on the end of it so that I can do a better job at cleaning off and removing all that old oil. So the longer the bristles, the less effective it's going to be, the shorter it is, the, the more abrasive it's going to be. So because the top part here spins and the bottom part goes up and down, because those bristles are long, you're not really gonna get much cleaning effort from that. It's not gonna be that effective. So if we trim it down to let's say that height there, it's not only going to be able to get access to some hard to reach areas, but it's going to be more effective because the bristle isn't as long. There's not gonna be so much flexing of the bristle. Instead, that's gonna be translated into actual movement and cleaning on the cylinder head. With the bristles now trimmed down, we can grab our toothbrush along with some super degreaser, spray it down on the cylinder head, turn the toothbrush on, and then it should go ahead and do a pretty good job at cleaning out all the intake ports. Now this toothbrush might not do such a good job on the exhaust ports because of the extra heat and gunk that goes through there. So what we're gonna probably have to do is sandblast or media blast those ports. So guys, that's where this video is going to be ending today. Now, at this point, the cylinder head is completely stripped. There's nothing really else that's on it. Now, I am probably going to go one step further and I'm going to be walnut blasting and then soda blasting the outside of the cylinder head. So not only am I going to have the inside of the cylinder head now completely clean, but I'm also gonna be refreshing the outside of it so that when I put it back on the motor, it's going to look brand new. Now, I'm probably gonna coat it also at that point, but that's gonna be for another video. Along with another video that's gonna be coming up is going to be me porting and polishing the intake and the exhaust side of the runners. Now, the reason why I wanna do that is because my cylinder head is made out of cast aluminum. And if I can remove the imperfections and the castings that are found inside the runners, I will not only be making the air that's flowing inside of them, I'll be able to make it so that it flows faster, but there's gonna be less turbulence. So that extra speed of air that's gonna be going through those runners means more power. Now, more power means that more air is gonna be able to exit the exhaust side. The faster that can exit, the faster it can spool my turbo. So every single factor of this plays into the performance and the power gains that are gonna be coming from the cylinder head and then in turn, my engine. If you guys have any questions regarding the video, throw them down in the comment section below and I'd be more than happy to help. Again guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.